Hi everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I'm Peter and I'm joined with Connor. Hey guys. We're going to talk about Better Call Saul, Season 2, Episode 9. It's called Nailed. Full spoilers for the episode as always on this show. So, much like last week, we started with the truck. Yes. And this was very much the subplot of the episode, so we'll just hit this quickly. Mike has his little plan, he's got a balaclava on, he steals the money from the tires of the truck, and uh, Salamanca is pissed about it, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> well, no, no, well, it was important that he left well, the guy alive. Oh well, yeah, it's important because the scene later, of course, with uh, what's his face, I forget his name. Nacho. Nacho. Uh, the scene with him later when he finds out that the innocent bystander who fi- found him tied up ended up getting shot uh, from Salamanca and Mike looked kind of just destroyed by that news when he got back yeah. in his car. The idea that he has that, that innocent blood on his hands, essentially, by proxy. Yeah. So he, he feels quite bad about that. And that's... I don't think there's much to talk about there. It just kind of makes sense. Yeah. It was a cool as fuck shot at the start. You know, he pulls across the, the spike line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, it was well done. It looked good. Yeah. So that's that. And I'm just going to let it be quickly because there's far more important things to talk about. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Um, also, quickly, the scene where Jimmy's shooting his uh, scene at the school and he's bullshitting about the singer. Also fun. Beautiful stuff. Jimmy is a, is a world class bullshitter. I, I don't think I've ever. <laughs> I've ever smelled quite as much as when the makeup artist girl says. Wasn't he English? <laughs> and he turns, he turns around and looks at her like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> I don't know. It, and consider that's right after he's been singing the song as well. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is fucking gold. Yeah, that was really funny. That was, that was some levity and an otherwise heavy episode. Fairly heavy episode, and a lot of nice little touches. So Chuck goes to this sort of hearing with Verda Mercy and uh, Hamlin. And the mistake that Jimmy planted in the last episode um, comes up, and he looks a bit of a tit. And, Understatement of the century. Yeah, and uh, Mesa Verde leave him and come back to Kim. And a few things I want to put out. Not so much about that scene itself, although that scene itself is well done. Uh, I like that I realised as Jimmy was doing it why he was going back in the house. So I was like, oh wait, he's changing them all back because if he goes yeah. in and finds it all wrong, then. It's like, well, something's happened here. So he's yeah. covering his tracks. Okay, I like that. Um, but one touch I really liked, and it was by the way, it was funny watching Kim and uh, Saul like, move the dentist chairs out. It was. That was cracking me up. I'm, actually, I'm a little disappointed that we're not going to have dentist chairs in the uh, office. A little bit. I liked but... how they painted it in the same colour, they are painting the offices in the same colours as the, the logo, the yellow and red. Hmm. The same as on, uh, you know, his, his coffee mug cup thing. Yeah. That's cool. But one little touch I liked in that scene, though, when she gets the phone call, I like that, obviously, Saul is expecting this at some point, and I like that in the background, he just happens to start painting over where the sort of the... What do you call it? The the, the, the hole? But you know what I mean? Like the the counter sort of area where you can see yeah. into the other room. I don't know what you call it. There's a proper, there's a proper word for that. I can't remember what it is, but... Window? I, I, I guess it's a window, yeah. Yeah. There's no glass, but yeah, I guess it is. But he he just casually sort of saunters over and starts painting that part of the wall. And it's played really well because it, or it's it's played very well that he's playing it well, that he doesn't know what's going on, if that makes mm. sense. Because yeah. he's just, he's, he's away and he's painting his own world and he's like, what's that, Kim? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, like, like absolutely nailing the pretending to not pay attention. Yes, exactly. He's nearly not paying attention, and it's uh, it's good. It, it was a really subtle touch, but I sort of smiled as he was doing it because I realised what he was doing, mm. and I really appreciated that. So, that's cool. But the next scene, when they go over to Chuck's house, um, um, there's some stiff competition later, but this scene is phenomenal. Probably the best scene of the episode. Joint, <laughs> like, like I say, yeah, it's stiff, stiff, competition. stiff it, it, competition. As soon as the the shot opens, and because obviously at this point we know Chuck knows. Yeah, Chuck. Chuck. We, he, we got idea. that at the end where he was talking to uh, Hamlin, and he's like, "This wasn't a mistake." And it's like, "Shit, he fucking knows." Yeah, he, he just gets it. He understands. And from it. from that point onwards, the dread just started building. Like, shit, yeah. what's actually going to happen here? Yeah. 
So the, the guy in, in Chuck's starts to explain everything and what he thinks Saul's done, and he basically says it exactly how it happened because we know this is the viewer. Yeah. And Kim's just quiet the entire time, and Saul's kind of defending himself, and he's whatever. Um, and what I loved about this scene, first of all, is that even once Kim starts talking, and we'll get to what she says in a minute, even when she starts talking, I was never sure one way or the other if she, like, believes it or not. I couldn't tell. It was impossible. Because when she starts talking, when she's told Jimmy to sh- shut up, and I'm like, okay, shit, she, she, she believes him, and oh dear. But then her speech is phenomenal. Because even though we find out in the next scene she she does believe that he did it, it doesn't matter. Everything she says in that scene is accurate. She pinpoints and calls Chuck out in every single bit of his bullshit. It's just fantastic stuff. None of it is wrong. None uh, of it is false. None of it is made up. She's calling him out on his actual bullshit. And it's the sort of stuff we've been talking about for the last, you know, eight, nine reviews. We've been talking about how Chuck doesn't care about him and it's driven him to this and maybe if he'd actually given him support instead of being like this jelly guy of his younger, you know, people like, you know, likeable guy brother and all that. Like, she brings it all up and shoots him the fuck down and the reason why you, you kind of think well does she believe him or not one she's been very convincing so that's just putting you off the idea that she has my cats are chasing each other yeah they're me. really fucking annoying little piece of shit they're, they're not annoying they're just they're doing their thing they're doing their thing but not only is she being really convincing she's making valid points that's that's what makes it more convincing than anything else it's like she could say oh i believe Jimmy yeah. over you. Why? Why wouldn't I? But it's the the fact that everything she says is so painfully true. And it's also because, and it's also really touching, because this is the first time I really remember someone properly saying, "No, I'm sticking up for him." No one ever sticks up for him. No, they don't. Which is kind of a symptom of why he is how he is. I imagine it probably is. That's why he probably feels like he has to do all this shit behind people's backs and all that to get ahead. Because no one has, has ever. No, no one else is going to help. Yeah, no one's ever really spoke from. Um, and that ties into something I'm going to say about and I'll see him later on, but... Fuck's sake, cats. <laughs> see, annoying piece of shit. Fireflies actually try to climb up the bookcase like Spider-Man. That is impressive. Garris! Right. <laughs> <sighs> Damn cats. Right. So, um, and what I liked about it as well is that he started to buy into it and going, well, you know what? Chuck, he's basically... At least from our perspective, he's made up this illness that's all in his head. He's getting old. Like, the idea that he can make a mistake, honestly, is quite believable. It is, especially one as, as small as mixing up a number. It's be- and she even points it out. You do, you're, not, you're doing this by gaslight. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, not, you're, you're not using the proper equipment. You Like, it's believable. It's actually a really good lie because it I, th- I think the thing that gets me as well is where she says, what's your evidence for all of this? And he just goes... I've lived. I, I've known him my whole his whole life. Yeah, do you like about that? Is that that's it's playing for every single person in that room's a lawyer. Yeah, and she does exactly what the court expects when you're trying to prove someone of a crime. Where the fuck's the evidence? Exactly, especially when she knows that if he is right and he will stick with it and he will take it to a court and uh, for fraud. Yeah, and she she's like, well, how would you possibly win this? Yeah, prove it. Prove yeah. it now, and it it can't. Um, and he, she puts him in his place and it's just a fantastic scene standout scene then they get in the car <laughs> and there's a moment of silence and you think Saul's about to have a little heart to heart and like thank her for everything she just said which I, I guess he was about to do that's what he was intending in doing and she just starts punching the fuck out of his arm because <laughs> she knows and then you're like oh it's, it's that weird thing where she knows but she's like she, she hates Chuck for what he's done and the way he's treated him. And then at the same time, she's kind of grateful in a way because obviously the client is a big thing for her but right the, now. The other thing she said, though, is that she I think she legitimately believes that Saul's the way he is because of the way Chuck treated him. Oh, so, she absolutely believes that, yeah. And when she says she feels sorry for him, I believe that too. So I think there's genuine feelings. That, like, it, like This is why she's not instantly just going to be like, oh, I'm getting as far away from this prick as possible. Like... You know, it's not something that's his fault. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool. And something I loved about the scene when they're in bed later 
when first of all it's genius the way they do it because she doesn't want to talk about it and know any details because if he ever gets caught she can't know anything about this or she's you know part of the crime and she starts saying well if I was someone and it's a really you know nice way of seeing and Saul realise what she's saying and he goes and that's where we get to the last part of the episode but what I love about this scene underneath all that is that he would get caught Saul would get caught by his brother but because him and Kim are a team, even though it's kind of implied teaming, she's, she can't come out and say it, but because he has her, he's covered. It's like, it's like as a team, they're kind of unstoppable. Yeah, it's it's this way where she kind of, she really beats around it and like, and he's kind of pretending that he doesn't know what she's on about. And then he finally gets at the end where he realises exactly what she's talking about. He just gets up. Yeah. Like, doesn't even say anything. No, 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 thank you. No, no, you're right. Anything just gets up and leaves. But it's he would have failed, he would have been caught, and this would be the end. But because he actually has Kim by his side, I like the idea that together they're actually really strong and they complete each other, mm. which is just going to make their inevitable downfall that much painful, pain, yeah. more painful. So, um, I really like that. And that takes us to the, the copier shop and the ending. And uh, first of all, uh, I really I, I said something that made me laugh earlier. I actually laughed even more in this scene. Actually, Saul like bribing the uh, the copy shop guy. I love that when the copy shop guy they start talking about the the cameras and the VCRs. And uh, and I love that when he extorts them out of two hundred dollars, Saul doesn't get annoyed. He simply smiles and goes. You're going to go far, kid. He's yeah. proud of him. He's it's, proud that he can't not to him. Yeah, exactly. It's like, there's, there's not even like begrudgingly when he get, gives him the extra and he's like, nah, you could have it. You're good at this. <laughs> I like that. That was good. Um, and then Chuck comes in and actually the scene earlier on when Chuck comes into the uh, whatever the hearing is that the, the, the bank's gone to, Presumably the, the town hall or not town hall, but the town court or whatever. Yeah. And uh, same kind of thing here. They played with the lenses that were using on the cameras to make everything look really t- tall and look as if he was surrounded by all this stuff. And then, of course, you cut that in with all those c- close-ups of electricity things and copiers and... And they were lights. edited really tight as well, so they're kind of just yeah. flashing in and out. Yeah. Uh, just to get a sense of the haphazard where his head is. I think... The biggest thing for this scene in general for me is I had no idea where it was going for the longest time. Kind of, yeah. Um, like I, you could, I could see a bunch of different paths that this could have gone. Yeah, the copy guy breaks down and just admits it and sells Jimmy out. Uh... One was, I wasn't sure, it kept cutting to Jimmy watching outside and he could see it affecting Chuck. Like he could see he's going to run in maybe. I thought he was going to run. Like, he couldn't help himself like helping his brother. Uh, I thought maybe Chuck was actually going to take a swing at the guy at one point. Frankly, put him in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I really thought that was going to happen at one point. It's uh, it's, it's obviously he keeps trying to ask, and he gets frustrated and frustrated that the guy's refusing to admit that Saul was ever there, and it ends with him being affected by electricity, and he collapses. I didn't realise we were right at the end of the episode, so I didn't realise this was going to be climactic. I was kind of thinking, oh, there'll be more scenes after this, so it'll just it'll collapse and or it'll have to be dragged out and that'll be the end of the scene and then we'll get to whatever's next. But as he's collapsing, his head hits the uh, the table. And everything's just like, shit. Oh, jeez. That, that, that I kind of, I literally like jumped a little bit like, fuck, that actually happened. Yeah, so this might have been Chuck's last episode or at least, I mean, it, it, I imagine he'll be in a hospital bed next episode but that might be... But yeah, he, well, we don't, he could be dead for all we know after that. He could already be dead, he could die next episode. That may not be the case, he might recover, we don't know, but it looked really serious. Um, and I really liked Saul across the street, like, mouthing call 911. Like, yeah. And I thought he was going to run at that point. And I did as well, but he, he just, he, even even though he is that good person and really and wants his brother to be healthy, at least, if, if not successful, he just isn't willing to put himself on the line quite that much. Not anymore, I think a season ago he would have. A season ago, you're right, but yeah, he's he's grown. Yeah, it's like partly he's grown, but I think mainly it's just you know uh, learning what his brother felt towards him and what he stopped him from doing and 
I think it's just you know that time's passed. Yeah. So. Fantastic episode. This might be my favorite episode of the season. Possibly, I honestly, I'd have to go back and. Yeah. <laughs> I think season one was easy because season one is it's the make episode. Yeah, it, uh, that's, that's just the one. Yeah, season two is a bit more difficult, but not because none of them have been good, but just because it's been quality. pretty much all been on that level of yeah. the Mike episode. So, now Bert, episode nine, Bert Cosall, fantastic. Finals next week. It's going to be a shame not having it again for a year, but um, that's this week's episode of Bert Cosall course let us know what you thought of the episode down below in the comments uh like and subscribe and all that jazz help us out and uh you know thanks for watching